tonight have Kathy Adams Clark with us as our judge. She is a Houston based photographer <clears throat> and she is quite accomplished. She was a founding member of NANPA. She's been the past president of NANPA. Um, you've written how many books? Like nine, 10 books? Uh, with my husband, 10. 10, 10 books. on Texas and uh, photography of birds in Texas, photography of birds in Costa Rica, uh, multiple articles and photos and magazines. <clears throat> she and her husband, Gary, have a um, column every week in the Houston Chronicle. Uh, Gary, it's a nature column and Gary writes the article and Kathy provides the photography. Mm -hmm. She also does trips all over the world and I've been very fortunate to um, go on a few of those trips with her. So um, Kathy, if you would tell us a little bit about how you got where you are and how you came, I know you came from business into photography. Uh, thank you, Vicki. And um, Kelly Hayes also, who's a member of this club, has traveled with me before. So it's nice to see the, it's nice to see the faces. Um, I came to photography ever since I was a small child. I considered myself a photographer. And um, when I went to sign up for um, LSU at uh, Louisiana State University, I told the advisor that I wanted to be a photographer and she just looked at me and she said management and she signed the paper and that was it. I went into management. I didn't know I could even fight back. So I studied management, got my degree in management, but working my way through college, I worked my way through college at the baby photography company that did pictures at Kmart and Walmart. And so if you've got any pictures of your children from the 70s or the 80s at Kmart or Walmart or TGNY or any of those other stores, that's what I did to work my way through college. But that lovely company moved me into management as soon as I got my degree. And from there on, I went into management. And then in um, 92, I decided to first published in 1994 in Birdwatcher's Digest, the first issue of Birdwatcher's Digest. Um, and then um, decided in 1992 that I wanted to make a go of doing this for real. So like a good management professor, I wrote a business plan, started executing the business plan. My husband told me I could be a photographer as long as I always brought in the same amount of money a human resource director brought in. And um, he wasn't a fool. And so that's been my commitment ever since. And so now I have, I went uh, left my corporate job in 1995 and went professional in 1995. So it's been a great journey, wonderful journey, and a lot of fun. Met a lot of great people along the way and seen a lot of fascinating things. So that's a little about me. You all ready to see the? Yeah. See the are, are you yeah. are you able to start with honorable mentions? I know you set up your own PowerPoint. I don't know how you set it up. Yeah. You're muted. You're muted. I'm unmuted now. Okay. Can I go ahead and share screen? Uh, yeah. Are you? Where are you going to start? Um, honorable mentions. Gray. Okay. Gray. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just have to get my papers in order here. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, there we go. And you all are seeing my screen, correct? Yes. Yes, okay, good, okay. These, Vicki, I'm good? Yes. Okay, super. Okay, um, gray winners, and these are in reverse order, starting with honorable mentions. Let me make sure I'm doing this right, there we go. Okay, that is Window Iceberg by Larry Kennedy. And once again, honorable mention. I think it's a, it's a fine, strong, outstanding image. Got a lot of graphic art to it, a lot of detail to it. It's really, really pretty. This one is What Did You Say? And that's mine. <laughs> And, and once again, Vicki, I think you did a really great job. The expressions on the two little girls are just absolutely priceless and how easy it would have been to miss that. But 
you know, it's that direct contact between those two girls that makes the picture so valuable. And then the little girl in the background who doesn't know whether she's going to stay in the middle of this fight or not, but um, definitely an outstanding image and it's so nice. And that the photography gods were nice to you about this, that you got that yellow wall in the back so that we've got that yellow and that red right next to each other. So it does make it a really strong, nice graphical image. Thank you. Uh, Seashell Spiral by Rob Formentelli. Rob, this is a this is a, a nice image, and um, you know I, I like all the detail in it. I like um, how much detail you can see, as well as all the lighting in it. Um, strong, nice image. Graph, good graphic design all the way through. Um, nice detail. Really well done. There's roof lines, and that's also mine. Um, this, you know, this this is I, I'm envious of photographers that can that can look up and see roof lines like this. Um, but the color coordination between the orange and the green and the blue and the yellow just gives you a color palette all the way through it. Um, we see all of those beautiful little lines and shapes. So there's a lot to keep the eye occupied, um, a lot of places for the eye to go. So it makes it a nice calendar image or a nice image where we can just spend some time in that image. Very well done. Patterns in Nature by Dennis Rausch. Dennis, you did a great job on this one. Um, the detail in the Monarch is, is outstanding from not only the, the scales, but the scales that are missing. Um, and then I love the idea that we don't have any distracting background to it. And it's that tight, tight crop that is so graphically pleasing to look at. Um, not too tight of a crop for the image so that we don't get the pixels pulling apart, just real good strong lines throughout. And then once again, really, really neat colors um, so that everything's harmonious, nothing's standing out. Good strong image. Rare sunny day in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job. Thank you. This is Painted Paintbrushes by Sharon Talatnik. Sharon, I, th I think you did a, a, a lovely job on this. This image really stood out when I looked at it. And you know, I, I can tell that, that you've, you've taken it into software and did different things with it. But I also really like the idea that you've got different brush strokes in the foreground than you do in the background. The layout of the brushes is nice. The color harmony is nice. And then the way that you've overlaid it with with textures and worked with textures. I think you just did a great job. It's a really, really nice, pleasant image to look at. Um, there is a lot of stuff to keep the eye occupied. The palette, it, it meaning not necessarily the, the palette of the, of the, uh, that the, the, the brushes are on, but the color palette of the entire photo from nothing being too saturated so that we've got these nice subtle colors all the way through it. It's, just, it's a really nice image, very strong. I forgot to say that's, that was a fifth place. Fifth place. This is fourth place, Straw Hat by John Harley. John, this is a, this is a simple image. So simple, nothing complex here at all. Um, but at the same time, because it is so simple, that makes it so strong. There's no distracting elements in it. There's nothing to pull your eye away from it. So it just has a simple structure to it. When I first saw it in the, in the, 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 uh, the pile of pictures, my eye went to it. Um, the, the, you know, the, the lines, the shapes, the patterns. And then when you look at it in, the, in closer detail, you see the cobwebs and then even that, that oil bucket behind it. So there's lots of stuff in this image, 
but yet you worked it really well with the shallow depth of field enough to keep the hat in focus, but yet the background's out of focus, but yet there's nothing in there that's distracting that's gonna pull your eye away from it. So a nice image that could be framed and people could look at it for a while, or in my case, as an editorial photographer, a nice calendar image because somebody could look at this for a month without getting tired of it. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's a strong image. Congratulations. Thank you. Third place printers, Allie, Richard Marquardt. Richard, you did a dynamite job on converting this to black and white. This has this has some really strong depth in its in its colors. It's black and white, but yet we've got all different kinds of shades and tones throughout it. But yet everything in here is crisp and clean. Um, so so the processing fits the image itself. Um, I don't see, you know, this, once again, this image has things that we can look at for, for an, another month if it were up on the wall. Um, really well laid out, no distracting elements throughout the frame, and then really, really well processed. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Second place, Stair Shadows, Kelly Hayes. This... This is, this is a strong image. Look at the colors here. We've got turquoise and we've got yellow and we've got white. But if you put it on the color wheel, your turquoise and your yellow, your light aqua and your yellow are always going to fit well together. That's that blue and that yellow together from those primary colors. But then the shades here make this really, really nice. There's also from a photography point of view, a serendipity a little like those two girls looking at each other in Vicky's photo. But in this photo also, you've got that serendipity, um, being able to spot this, being able to see it, and then being able to frame it up. Kelly, I think you just did a, a phenomenal job. And then in the processing, not destroying it, keeping that shadow really soft on one side, but over on the left, it gets softer as it goes over um, around the tank. Um, so this is one of those, those graphic elements that I compliment the photographer on being able to see this. I see stuff like that when this one, I'm going 80 miles an hour down the freeway and there's no way that I could ever stop for it. Um, but Kelly saw this and then executed it and pulled it off. And I really give you my compliments on it. It's a really, really nice, strong image. Good detail. First place, Bee Fly by Frank Began. Frank, you just did, you did a great job. Um, you, the, the, the Bee Fly has so much detail, edge to edge, all the way through the wings. Um, and then the flower has all that detail inside of the flower also. But then also we get into these great little things like the detail on the back of the bee fly. Um, there's, there's all these little scales and hairs and things like that. So your detail in here is beautiful. And then we've got that color harmony too with the, those, the beautiful way that these colors are all laid out that are so flattering to the critter. So if it is a setup, you did a darn good job getting the color harmony exactly right. If it's not a setup and you happen to just come up on it and, and capture it, even more power to you. But I love it very much. Really great job. Congratulations. Okay, you want to move on to Scarlett now? Yeah, can he answer my question? Is it a setup or was it? Um, I don't know if just he stumbled upon. Is he here? I don't know if he's here. I don't think he's here. He's not here. Okay. So. Okay. Vicki will have to find an answer and give it to me. One of these. <laughs> okay. His last name's Begun. I think he held the bee hostage. <laughs> that's a bad, that's a bad joke. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Bad okay. Joke. I've got four images, correct, Vicki, that I wanted to talk about. Oh, okay. You're going to do those now? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Can I do those now? Because they yeah. came in the same folder. 
Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to yeah. read the names and, and uh, photographers. Just You just go ahead and make your suggestions. Um, this was uh, the Birmingham, I have my notes, the Civil Rights uh, Memorial. And who did this one? Um, Anybody? I, that's I, okay. I was just I, thinking they would be here. Very very ramp up. Ramp up. You know, I, I love the way that you framed it. Um, I love the high key effect to it with the over overexposed sky and notice that high key effect right around the snout of the dog and then that accentuates the eye of the dog. So here human eye always goes to the brightest area of the frame first. That brightest area just happens to be between the two men and right where the dog's nose is. So where this one got crowded out by some other images when I was judging. I just wanted to point this out to you that you, you created a beautiful image here and then you processed it really well also. And even without a title on it, we can kind of tell exactly what it is. Um, so I wanna compliment you on this. I think you did a great, great job on this one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is, um, you know, I, I, I hate to admit this, but I still have not been to Ohio. I have flown over Ohio many times, but I've still not been to Ohio. It's one of those states that I need to get to. But I see these, this, this picture of the racing pigs. And this just reminds me so much of the Midwest. Um, you know, carnivals, the Midwest, people having fun. But then as a photographer, you, you frame this so well with the pigs coming right around the corner, which means we're gonna get a little slant in their little pig bodies. And then the smiles on all of the people back in there. But this image also gives us those thirds, the bottom third, the pig, the middle third, the people, and the top third, the Ferris wheels. So we know exactly where we are. It is a great storytelling image. Um, you know, county fair or, or state fair, whatever it is, summertime, people having fun, and then just this, this, you know, absolute humor at watching a bunch of pigs run around. Um, so as an image, I think you did a great job, wonderful storytelling image and a, at a real nice iconic image of, uh, of this place and time. So I think you did a fine, fine job on this one. Thank you. You're welcome. And this one I wanted to um, bring to the, the, the um, attention of the photographer. This is a good image. This has color to it. This has strong bones to it. So you have the right composition. You have that, that um, starburst off the sun. I don't like the processing. And I think the processing really harmed you in this case. Um, the sky and the sun are just a little too bright. I think that this could be reprocessed in a different way so that it was able to bring out the details in the image more rather than that glaring middle brightness of the, of the image. Um, you know, we should be able to see some sky in there. We should be able to see some detail in there. So I'd like to encourage you to go back and reprocess this one and see if you can really do justice to it. Um, because I think that it's got more potential than you've actually presented it. Comments? I'm just looking to see whose that was. Um, Golden Dawn. Larry Kennedy. Larry Kennedy, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I'd just like to see some more processing or some less processing or something. I'd like to see it reprocessed completely. I don't know if he's here or not. Okay, I haven't heard from him. Larry's here. I saw him come in. Um, and Larry, if you just make sure you unmute yourself if there's anything you wanted to say. He may not want to say anything. Just but it's I know. a good image. Just I just think it needs to be reprocessed. 
Okay, to the next one. This is titled Seagull. So I got all kinds of stuff to talk about with this one. First of all, there are no seagulls. Gulls are gulls. Gulls don't go out to sea. So there are no seagulls. They are called gull. Um, it's a misnomer to put the word sea in front of the word gull because gulls are inland birds and uh, shoreline birds. They don't go out to sea. So just as a bird watcher, you should call this gull. <laughs> then as a photographer, um, it's, it's cropped. And I love the way you did it because it's cropped graphically. So it looks great, but it is so pixelated. And then by pixelating it the way that it is, it's very difficult to look at. And in the competition, you had other things that were well processed. And so, it, you know, it just lost out. This, I think this once again needs to be reprocessed. It's, if it's cropped this far in, then do something so that we don't see that it's pixelated, throw a texture on it or do something like that so that we don't see it, that it's so pixelated. Because other than that, it's well laid out. It's a good shot. We got that little highlight in the in the bird's eye. Um, I like what you did, but it's the pixelation that turned me off on this one. Well, I'll keep that in mind. But I don't Photoshop. But I just cropped a little bit too hard, I guess. I think you. I think you Photoshop. Uh, not Photoshop, but I think you cropped a little too hard, or it need it was too small of a file to be presented this big, maybe. All right, I'll remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, I think what you did and how you laid it out is absolutely fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, scarlet category. <laughs> We're ready? I'm ready. And these are these are backwards as well. Honorable mentions first. Okay. This is sitting this one out. This is mine. I love it. I, I, you know, I, the pensive mode, pensive mood of this little girl is incredible. Um, and then she is beautiful. Look how long her fingers are and how long her legs are. She has just got, you know, such great lines. And then the way that she's got her body folded, it, it just, it, you know, it's just absolutely beautiful. And I think it really, really is accentuated by turning it into a black and white because we're not distracted by any colors in the photograph. We just get to take in all of the lines and all of the shapes and all of the shadows. So I think you did a great job um, converting it to black and white and capturing this little one um, and then just making it one simple little simple um, photograph. Good job. Thank you. Very pretty. This is Who's Your Daddy by Cherry Williams. And, and how can you not like this? I mean, look at that. Look at that kid. Look at that baby's face. I mean, that is the lighting here is outstanding. We've got that high key background back there. So we're not getting any distracting elements. There's obvious love between both of these people or both of these subjects. Um, I just think you did a great job. I hope that whoever this is absolutely treasures this image. Um, but um, I, I think it. I think it's just. I think it's just beautiful. Um, it has a lot of warmth and a lot of feeling to it. Whose is this? It's Cherry's. <clears throat> Cherry, are you here? Good job. I, I was muted, and yes, thank you. <laughs> You're I was thinking welcome. it looks like the pictures you probably took at Walmart when you were a student. <laughs> no, 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 no. We never did anything this good. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't fit within it at all. <laughs> no, I think, you, I think you did a fine job. Thank you. This is Prehistoric Kingdom by Donna Winters. And, and this one I love. Donna, I think you did a great job with the textures of this one from the from the pulling the, the great blue heron almost, you know, out completely out of the textures um, and then making sure that the feathers had that such fine detail all the way through and then pulling it into the background in the crescent moon and all that other thing. I think I think what you did and laid it out is a is a great design. Um, and I, I really, really like it. You did a good job. Thank you. Thanks. Very nice. 
This is uh, Featherweight by Dennis Rausch. Dennis, I think you went on this one, you did a fine job. It, it, that, that beautiful one feather in that sunlight with, and then the water is blue all the way through and has even more beautiful textures and patterns going through it. I didn't see it this, this well when I was judging it. Um, it's nice to see it bigger. Um, it, it is such a pleasing, quiet, serene image with just that one little feather in that shaft of light. And, and everything that needs to be in focus is absolutely in focus. And then the fall off of the depth of field going in back and forwards. Great job. Thank you. Good job. That feather on the water. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, Cincinnati Union Terminal by Kelly Hayes. Ah, uh, this, the colors and the graphics here. It's a nice picture. Stunning. Um, and, and Kelly, you did a, a fine job. Um, when this one first came up, just, just this, you know, what, what's not to like about this giant, huge yellow swirl with this giant, huge yellow arch. And once again, here we are with these colors that are all in harmony with each other, with these golds and these oranges and these, you know, these lighter colors, and then you throw the green in it, and then we get that American flag in there. Um, I love the graphic elements here um, and, and how they lay out because we, using the lens, we can just enjoy this sweep. Um, I'd, I'd love to see this in real life to see how it, you know, how it translates to the human eye versus through the camera lens. But I think you did a phenomenal job on this one. This one is really, really a strong image. Great graphics all the way through it. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that a fisheye lens? No, it was um, my 16 to 35. Oh, okay, okay. And, and you know what's neat, Kelly, is with the 16, it's not, it's not too distorted, but yet it's still that really wide field of view. So I think how you laid it out is really, really nice. Website by John Butterfield. Um, this is such a strong image and look how simple it is. It's like that little hat that we saw before. This is so simple. It is one little statue's face, but with covered in cobwebs. And so the way that you were able to get this in the light so that the light's right, not overpowering in any way, but still be able to fill in all the graphic lines. So we've got that beautiful one spider web going down from the tip of the nose to anchor the image down on the bottom. Um, and then these beautiful shades of grays and whites and blacks. This is a, a really, really strong image. It's got a lot of graphic to it. And I like that you converted it into black and white because I think as a black and white image, um, it, it, it stands out so much. So I, I think you've got something really powerful here. It's a really, really nice image. Thank you. You are welcome. I like that one, John. Fifth place, Loveless Cafe by Richard Marquardt. Richard, you do, you captured the graphics of this. Um, you know, we've, we've got the, we've got the beautiful neon sign, which, you know, deserves to be photographed, but then do that at twilight. I assume that this is twilight because it looks like it to me. And then to have the anchors down at the bottom of the two shiny motorcycles. Um, this is an opportunity. This is a scene that needed to be photographed. And I think that you photographed it well, you executed it well, it's balanced but yet it's got all of these wonderful colors in it. So I, I just think you did a great job. And I love the no vacancy sign. So that was just that little lanyap in the photograph of having the no vacancy in the Loveless Hotel. Um, so I think you did a great job. Thank you. And it came with hot biscuits and country ham. Yeah, yeah. And I bet you those are really, really good biscuits. <laughs> Absolutely. Was it taken at twilight? Did you do twilight? Yeah, I was waiting. 
yeah. half half an hour to get in and standing outside and this just unfolded. That's always have your camera with you. Yes, and be ready. But that's one of those things is you've got to be ready and you've got to know how to pull it off. And so you you were ready, you knew how to pull it off, you knew how to photograph under twilight. Um, my compliments yeah. to you. Really nice. Yeah, but a couple of motorcyclists parked in perfect position. So yeah. Yeah, but you got to be able to take advantage of it. You know, it's yeah. like it's like Kelly's picture of the stairway up the tank. You got to be able to see that, know what to do with it, and pull it off. So you did a good job. All right, thanks. Uh, fourth place, peasant woman with flowers by Dick Wood. Dick, you did a great job. This is this is a beautiful model, but then you executed it well with with capturing her and then processing it properly. Um, I, I love it all the way through. She's, she's an absolutely lovely woman and the way that you've posed her and the way that the light has fallen on her is outstanding. This just takes us you know, into an old master oil painting. So the, the posing here is super, super traditional, um, but, but really an outstanding image, very strong background doesn't detract from anything that's going on. And then I like the color palette in here also, not too, um, not too modern, like we just saw with Richard's picture of the motorcycle. This color palette fits her so well. Great job. Thank you, I uh, used uh, color grading. Yeah, you did a great job with the color grading, really good. And by the way, I went to school in Texas, so. <laughs> very good, very good. This is pretty. Thank you. Third place, Sunbeam Egret by Donna Winters. Donna, this is this is so pretty. Um, you know, this is again one of those serendipity moments. So, um, you know, a, a photo that that maybe we had some blurring in it. Um, I assume that's what's going on here. So we've got some blurring that's going on in this image. But then this is a great way to use it. So, Donna, was it blurred to begin with? Yeah, it was deliberate. I was playing with um, flying egrets and herons with slow sh shutter so, speeds. Slow shutter speeds. You did a great job. And then to process it in the sepia um, accentuates that slow shutter speed in that movement of the bird. Um, you did really outstanding image. Very, very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Second place, Snowy Owl by Frank Began. So Frank, <laughs> I haven't yet seen this bird. So I'm, I'm envious because you've seen a bird that I haven't seen of all the birds I've seen in the United States. I have not yet seen a snowy owl. Um, and then your processing is gorgeous. So the, the posture of the bird, it's proud, it's, it's majestic, the whole posture of the bird. And then to process this with the black and white and leave those golden eyes, I think you did um, you know, a, a, a nice job as a photographer. Um, good use of your f-stop, your depth of field, so that your background is nice and out of focus, but your foreground has that, that, that lichen covered on those rocks. Um, everything about it is, is, is beautiful. Great job on that one. Frank isn't here. He's not here. So no. pass along. He did a great job. Okay. And first place, Merchant of Venice by Dick Wood. Dick, this is this once again is is really good. So you're, you know, you've obviously got a rapport with people and know how to pull off that that posing and the and the um, the eye contact, or in the case of the other woman, no eye contact. Uh, your posing is great. And then I like what you did here also with the color grading and the way that you presented it. Beautiful use of that background and then the foreground pulling in all the way from those eyes, just that little squint of an eye down through that beard into those rings on the fingers. There's, there's so much here to look at, but your lines are, are super strong. Thank you. That was taken actually at a Renaissance festival. It wasn't posed. I yeah. took like five or six shots of this guy and he was looking all over the place. And yeah. I took it with an 80 to 400 millimeter lens. But then I did color grading on it and capture one and basically dodging and burning, but not that much with the other, other stuff, I basically. 
you did you did a good job. It doesn't look overly processed. It's beautiful to photograph humans with that 80 to 400 because you've got a little bit of compression going on you don't have to get right up on them um so it, it's you know you knew when to push the shutter and then you knew how to process it afterwards thank you very much congratulations that's a good one and then i pulled four images out any questions on those or anything before i go on to the next ones no I pulled four images out of the scarlet category that I wanted to talk about. Um, this image, I'd, once again, I'd like to see you reprocess this one. Um, I think it's got the bones, it's got the structure, it's got the, the patterns and the shapes, it's got everything that it needs, but I think it needs to be reprocessed to, to pull all of that out. It gets too lost, um, the structure of the tree, uh, everything in it, I think it just gets too lost. And, and I don't know whether I could really tell you what it needs, but it needs something. Um, so, you know, maybe, you know, if it, if it's, you know, Dick talks to you about the color grading or whatever needs to be done, there just needs to be some reprocessing in here to pull this image out, because I think it's got potential but I don't know whether you presented it as th that way. Whose is this? That one? I Roberta Kane. Was that Roberta? Okay. Yeah, Roberta's not here tonight. She's okay. had to go to another meeting, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, I think it needs something. It needs something else. And I'd, I'd love to see, I'd love to see it processed in another way to pull it out a little bit better. This one I, I love, and I just wanted to pass along my compliments to the photographer. Um, you know, just something as simple as a whole bunch of garlic, but the way that you've presented it in such tight, sharp focus, and then processing it in this beautiful black and white with nothing overexposed or nothing too black. I think what you did is absolutely beautiful. So I just wanted to let you know that their competition was strong, but I think this image is really, really powerful. Who's is this? Karen Talatnik, and thank you. <laughs> okay, it's, it's a beautiful image. It's very, very pretty. Thank you. Yeah, and you're, you're processing in black and white. Did you, which software did you use? <laughs> oh, I don't remember what I used to do. <laughs> Okay, I love it. I think it's, I think it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And this one, another monarch butterfly, um, but I needed, I wanted to bring it to your attention. The background is beautiful. The flower is beautiful and the monarch butterfly is in tight, sharp focus, but it is way over processed. Um, the blacks are just solid black. Um, there, there's just, it's so harsh on the monarch butterfly that this is another one that I'd like to see it reprocessed because I can't get past the idea that it's almost as if the sliders have just been used way, 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 way too much for an image like this. Whose is this? Donnie Roberts, Robertson. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a strong image. It's got all the structure that you need and it's got this beautiful dark back, I mean, this beautiful pure background, but it just needs a lighter touch on the processing. Way, way, way too, too harsh. And then this one, if I'm not mistaken, this one might be my, my last one in this series. I love this. I think this is, this is a stunning image. Um, I, I like your structure of it. I like everything about it. I don't like where your focus point is. Your focus point is right before the eye and the human eye usually does not like an eye to be out of focus. And since that focus point is right in front of the eye and we don't get enough of this beautiful horse's eye, it bugs me because I can't see the eye as much as I want to see the eye. So I would much rather that the focus point was just a hair into the eye so that I could at least see the eye. I feel like I'm missing something by not being able to see the, uh, the beautiful eye of the horse.
I don't know whose that was. I can't see. Phyllis Stevens. Okay. I can't seem to find any of them on the list here, but anyway. Yeah. But can you, know. can you, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, that's, that's mine. I'm on my iPhone. I'm not sure how to do an iPhone and Zoom at the same okay. time. So yeah, yeah, that, that was mine. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you, you know, the structure of it, the, the idea of it, the concept of it is beautiful. The lighting of it is beautiful, but I just feel deprived that I can't actually see the eye. I can't make eye contact with the horse and that's what it's trying to do. I'm trying to make eye contact with it and it's trying to make eye contact with me and we can't connect because I can't see the eye. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And I've been doing lots of eyes this summer because, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I can, I can see that. Yeah, and I think that, I think it bothered me too. I don't okay. know why I kept, I don't know why I kept kept pulling this one out though yeah um well because it's got good structure it's mm -hmm. got absolutely you did exactly what you were supposed to do but that focus point needs to be on that that bottom eyelid maybe so that we can get the got eye in focus yeah 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 thank you you're welcome so, okay i am gonna give my screen back to you i can't find my little thing. Where am I? I can't find my little screen share thing. Donna, can you take it back from me? It's on the bottom. I know I'm not finding it for some reason. Can you scroll down your screen a little bit more? I did. Okay. I did. And I'm not, it's not it's not coming up where it's supposed to be. I don't know uh, why. I think I what? just got that correctly. Did I? Um, uh, there it go. should come back to you now. You got it. Yes. Yep. Well, Kathy, thank you so much. I, we all appreciate your input and, and the time you took uh, to review these and make oh. your assessments. Um, I know it was a lot of work and we do appreciate it. You know, it's yeah. always so much fun to see your work because you all are shooting things that are different than what I shoot. And I, I always like looking at other people's images. Um, so I hope I wasn't, I wasn't mean or cruel to anybody, oh. but I, um, <laughs> no, no, it, was, no. it was definitely a pleasure to look at your work. So thank you for letting me look at it, Vicki. I was, that was pleased. It was no Thanks. safety issues. In this Good one. comments. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. At the end, nice. I have a, a question. Sure. Thanks very much. My entire life, I have called those birds seagulls. Yeah. I did not know. So there really is no seagull? No, there is no seagull. The, the birds that go out to sea have names like Jaeger and, and Petrel and things like that. But the gulls um, only are shoreline gulls and then inland gulls. So if you remember, that story that we heard in school um, of the Mormons out in Salt Lake and the locusts, the grasshoppers coming and the gulls, you know, the, mir the miraculous um, gulls coming from the ocean to eat all the grasshoppers. Well, no, those gulls all lived around the Great Salt Lake. I mean, they didn't, you know, yeah. You ruined the story. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. My family came over with the, with the Mormons to, to, to Salt Lake, so I can tell that story, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the gulls live there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> what about Jonathan Livingston Seagull? That we well, but, read. but he's he's not out at the ocean. I mean, you know, even around <laughs> your Great Lakes, you all have the gulls that fly across the lakes. You know. Yeah, I always wondered why we have gulls, uh, seagulls. I always thought in yeah. the Kroger parking lot. Yep, because they're gulls. Yeah, yeah, and and some of them are inland gulls, and some of them are only around the seashores. Those but are the ones. Those are the ones that didn't get their sea legs. <laughs> yeah. Ours are suburban gulls. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Like deep in the parking lot, they're full of water, and that's it. And two yeah. little, little little legs. Oh, yeah. they, <laughs> they make good practice if you want to do bird photography. I know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where you. That's where you do your action photography is on gulls around a, a lake or a parking lot. Yep. And model model airplanes, remote control airplanes. Oh, that's true. That made me a lot better bird photographer. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, well Donna, did you have anything else? No, I was just going to ask any other comments. Yeah, Kathy, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, thank Kathy. You so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Comments from, from people like you. Um, when you're looking at the photographs, because part of the competition is too, is this a great learning experience for everybody? And how do we look at photographs? And then how does it help contribute to all of us becoming better photographers? Mm -hmm. so really appreciate all of your comments and the time it took to really take a look at everything and evaluate that. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. You are welcome. Yeah, all thanks right, for your everybody. time. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So good to see all you wonderful people. And I'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care. Stay Thank safe. Bye, see everybody. Bye-bye.